Michael Grady and Richard Jefferson, part of the broadcast team. Let's get their final thoughts on the action. All right, thanks a lot, Nancy. All right, RJ, this game started out as a track meet, but as the game slowed down, as the game settled down, what stood out to you from the net side of things that allowed them to take control? Well, I, I thought the Nets bench did an amazing job, especially in short stretches uh, when James Harden was off. That's one of the things you worry about when you're shorthanded. No Kyrie. You can't really, you know, have Kyrie on the court and let James get some rest and vice versa. So when you have James Harden on the floor, you know, you know that the offense is going to be buzzing. But when he was off the floor, the Nets bench did a great job of extending the lead. Actually, at one point in time, forcing Portland to call a timeout. So I really love what the Nets bench did tonight, guys great contributions. Blake Griffin, so many guys gave something. Tyler Johnson knocking down shots. So it was just a quality team win for the Brooklyn Nets. I'm going to get to some of the role players in a moment, but how about James Harden? We didn't know if he was going to play in this game until about 25 minutes before the tip, and he missed some shots late, but 25 points dished out, 17 assists. What can you say about his performance? 17 assists, man. Like, that. that's just so impressive. Like, you know that this team is shorthanded, and there is a reason why people have him in the MVP conversation. This was an opportunity. He's not feeling 100%. They're on the front end of a back-to-back. -back. There's so many things that are kind of going against you, and he still shows up, plays an amazing game, and does everything that the Brooklyn Nets need for him to do in order to get this victory, contributing, making sure that other players, you see Jeff Green with a 20-point game. A lot of those are from the, the 17 assists. And so, you know, there were just so many contributions that you got from other guys, but a lot of it was because James Harden was setting him up on a platter. And a number of guys stepping up. We knew the Nets were going to be shorthanded. No Kyrie Irving, still no Kevin Durant, obviously. Landry Shamit not out there. But you mentioned Jeff Green, what he was able to do. Joe Harris was knocking down shots. And Nick Claxton, that fan club, continues to grow with what he's doing on both ends of the floor, RJ. Yeah, like I, I said it in the open. Like I know that the Nets fans were sad to see Jared Allen leave. But, you know, when one thing goes, something else shows up. And when you see Claxton play, it's with similar intensity. It's with similar joy. He runs the floor. He blocks shots. He does all the little things. Now, look, he is still a young player and has a ton of room for growth. But if you are a part of that fan club, you're going to be a part of his fan club. It's a tough back-to-back. -back. You get a victory against Portland, then you make your way to Salt Lake City for a matchup with the Jazz. Your early thoughts on that matchup? Well, look, the, the Brooklyn Nets have done such a great job against Western Conference opponents. I'm, I, it's it's unfortunate that you don't really get to see one of the marquee matchups in the NBA, NBA this year at full strength. You want to see James. You want to see Kyrie. You know, you want to see where they match up and how they stack up. Like, you're confident that they're two of the best teams, but you want to see that matchup because the Utah Jazz have been playing the best basketball of any team over the course of this season. They are at the top of offensive ranks, defensive ranks, blocking shots, offensive efficiency. It's, it's just it's impressive what the Utah Jazz have done this year. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what type of effort, especially at the end of a long road trip, coming off a of back-to-back. This is not one of those games that you kind of like mark on your calendar because there's just so many things that it's tough to really see what the Nets are going to be able to do tomorrow. Our viewers should mark it on their calendar. Full house tomorrow. Iron Eagle, Sarah Kustak, and more RJ after dark. We'll send it back to you in the studio, I'm, Nancy. I'm so sorry. <laughs>